all right youtube i'm back with another video and so what i want to do in this video here is i want to show you in scriptures why you can believe what's written by the apostles in the bible because you know a lot of people say things today and they try to tell you what this mean or what that mean or what jesus meant when he said this but I want to show you in the Bible why you can believe exactly what these men said compared to what a man say today. All right. So now let's get started. I want to start off in the book of Luke chapter 24. So in the book of Luke chapter 24, I want to start reading at verse 45. All right. So let's start. Well, let's start at 44. And then we talking about Jesus about to appear to his Disciple, he about to appear to his disciples. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So now Jesus is directing, he letting his um disciples know that everything I spoke to you, like these are the things that must be fulfilled that was written in the law of Moses, that was written by the prophets, or that was written in the Psalms concerning him, right? He says, then, oh, now remember, now when he said the things that was um, that came to be fulfilled, he was referring to his death, burial, and resurrection that Moses had prophesied would happen, that the prophets had prophesied would happen, that was written of him that's written in the Psalms, all right? So all these things were written in the Old Testament times that it was going to be fulfilled and Jesus was letting his disciples know that this is that, all right? So now let's continue, verse 45. Then he, talking about, um, then Jesus opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See, everything that's the scriptures he's talking about is what's written in the law of Moses, what's written in the prophets, in the Psalms, all right? Concerning Jesus. So now Jesus opened up his disciples' understanding that they may understand the scriptures that was written of him, of the things that was going to take place, the things he had to go through, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, all right? The Son of God. So then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them. Now, listen what he finna say. Thus it is written. Where is it written? In the scriptures, in the prophets, in the Psalms, in the law of Moses. Thus it is written. And thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. So now remember, he's letting them know that it is written and it behold Christ, who is Christ, that's the chosen one of God. That's the son of God. It behold Christ and it was written of Christ to suffer, to rise from the dead the third day. Okay. And he says, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. So this repentance and remission of sin is preached in Christ's name, the chosen one name, the anointed one's name. And he says, among and then look where it should be preached at, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So first starting there in Jerusalem, and, he, and look what he say, and ye are witnesses of these things. That's the point that I want to make with this scripture too, is that ye are witnesses of these things. So now, his disciples are his witnesses. Now, what I want to do is I want to go show you more in scripture where these same disciples that Jesus says are witnesses to these things that occurred, that came to pass, that was written by Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms concerning Jesus on his death, on his suffering and his rising from the dead the third day. They are witnesses of these things that it happened. So now let's go into the scripture. Now we talking about, he talking to his, his disciples. He had 11 disciples at this point. Judas already then um, then died already. Already then crucified himself or rather killed himself. All right. So now 
let's go to Peter. Let's start with Peter. Because I want now remember, Jesus said his disciples, he says, verse 48, and ye are witnesses of these things. So we talking about a witness now. Now let's go to Peter. Now let's go to the book of Acts chapter 3. Because I got to show you what the witnesses said compared to men today. Because men today didn't witness this. All right. But the disciples, they witnessed it. So Acts chapter 3, let's start reading at verse 12. Now we got Peter preaching in the temple. Now Peter is one of the 11 that was witnesses. All right. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Now they had just got done hitting the lame man. He says, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? He says, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus. All right? Now, I know what men say about Jesus. They say he is the father. The father, we know that's the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. But yet, Peter, the witness, says that the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son, Jesus. Okay? He glorified his son, Jesus. And look what he said about him. Whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. All right. Let's um let's con let me see here. Let's continue. But ye denied the holy one and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead. All right? So we talking about this same one, this one that God glorified, his son, Jesus, who is the holy one, who is the just God had raised from the dead. You know, also this prince of life, he says, and kill the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. So Peter give confirmation that we are witnesses that God raised his son, Jesus. Y'all delivered him up, okay? Y'all denied him, and y'all killed him, and yet God raised him from the dead, all right? All right, but yet he called him, God raised his son, the father, the God of our fathers raised his son, Jesus. He glorified his son, Jesus, all right? So now let's look more at Peter. Let's go over to um, the book of Acts. Let's go to chapter 5. Let's go to chapter 5. I want to give you more of the witness, Peter. Um, Acts chapter 5. Let's start at verse 29 through 32. All right. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we are to obey God rather than men. They was trying to shut Peter's mouth from preaching Jesus. All right. The God. Now, listen, listen to Peter again. He says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. So how is God of our fathers, how is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus, when yet Peter, the witness, says the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Okay? Whom, and, and, and he letting them know who Jesus is, whom ye slew and hanged on the tree. Him, talking about Jesus, had God exalted with the right hand, with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so also, look at the other witness, and so also is the Holy Ghost whom God had given to them that obey him. Now, remember, Jesus said, when the comforter has come, he going to testify of me. So the comforter being the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, going to testify of him. 
Now Peter is saying right here, and we are witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost. Wow. So we got his disciples being a witness, and we got the Holy Ghost being a witness. Okay? So, hold on real quick, because I, I got to show you. It's being put on my mind to show you the scripture, so I'm going to show you the scripture. All right. So here it is. John 15, verse 26. This is also what Jesus said about the spirit when it comes. First, um, this is John 15, 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Now, Jesus said, I'm going to send it from the Father. He says, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And, and look what else Jesus say. And ye also shall bear witness. Jesus saying, ye also, ye also with the spirit shall bear witness. Because why? Because ye have been with me from the beginning. Hallelujah to God. God is good, man. God is good. He's he's look, he's telling you. He's the comforter. He gonna come and he gonna he gonna testify of me. And you also gonna bear shall bear witness of me because you've been with me from the beginning. Alright? And so that's what Peter is doing in the book of Acts. Like I just read to you, chapter three and chapter five. Now let me go back to um Acts chapter five. Um, let's go back to, well, I started at verse 29 and I read to 32 and he says in verse 32, um, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so also, and so we is also the Holy ghost whom God had given to them that obey him. So we got Peter, we got the Holy ghost being the witness that God, he raised his son. He exalted his son. All right. So Let's go ahead and go to Peter again. I want to show you another thing Peter said. Let's look at 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at what Peter say in verse, uh, let's start at verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, this is the apostle you got to believe. All right? I believe this apostle. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Look what he's saying. So now he put a distinction. The righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Okay? So he's putting a distinction between um, the knowledge, he says, of God and of Jesus, our Savior. Now look at what he says also in verse 16 through 18. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses, but were eyewitnesses, we talking about witnesses now, of his majesty, for he received from God the Father, okay? Now we talking about his, our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son so even God the Father gave a witness and said that Jesus was his beloved his beloved his beloved son in whom he says, I am well pleased. All right. So now we got Peter. We got the Holy Ghost. We got God, the Father. Now let's look at John. 
All right, let's go to the book of John chapter 20. The book of John chapter 20, I want to read verse 31 and 33. This is even after Thomas in verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said in verse 29, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou have seen me. This is after Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus said, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So that pertains to us because we have not seen. We not a test. We not an eyewitness. We can't testify that we have seen Jesus rise from the dead. But Jesus himself, the son of God says, the Christ says, the anointed one says, the holy one of God says, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So look at verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God. See, they didn't say he is the father. They didn't say he is God the Father. I just showed you that with Peter. Now, John is saying that these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, ye may have life through his name. So if you believe that, you can have life through the name of the Son of God. That's what God said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 9 through 12. Look at it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9 through 12. So, I'll let you go to that. Because for this video, for the sake of time, I just want to put the witnesses before your eyes. But read 1 John chapter 5, verse 9 through 12, and you will see how God, he made his son. He put eternal life in his son if you believe in him. All right? So, let's look now. Let's look more at John, 2 John. I want to give you 2 John. Let's look at chapter 1. Now, let's, leave, let's read verse 3, and then I'm going to read verse 9 through 11. 2 John chapter 1, starting at verse 3. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. Grace be with you, Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Listen to, listen to John here. He says from mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Now look at what he say here in verse 9 through 11. Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ had not God. If you don't abide in this doctrine of Christ, he said you transgress and you don't have God. But look what he say. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, he had both. He had both. He had both the father and the son. So the son can't be the father. The father can't be the son because the witness John says, if you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you have both the Father and the Son. And, it, and look what he say about those who don't come with this doctrine. Look what he say. Look at what John says about those who don't have this doctrine. This go for your preacher today. This go for your so-called apostle today. This go for your so-called prophet today. Okay? If there come any unto you, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Don't even receive him into your life. Okay, I'm telling you that. If he say don't receive him into your house, don't even receive him into your life, neither bid him Godspeed. That's, that means to greet him. For he that bid him Godspeed, he that even greet him, is partaker of his evil deed. 
is evil when he don't bring this doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ is that God raised his son and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. The doctrine of Christ is that you have the father sending the son. All right? Let's continue. Let me give you Paul. Now, you might say, well, Paul wasn't one of the 11 apostles that Jesus opened up his understanding and gave revelation to, like I read to you in Luke 24. But let me show you why you can believe Paul. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's start reading here at verse um, 15 and 16. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. So understand, Peter is letting you know that Paul was given some wisdom. All right. He was given wisdom. Well, look what he say. He says, according Paul, according to um to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. All right. So Paul written. He written down. He wrote down some wisdom that he was given. Also, he says, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, meaning they twist, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So Peter's letting you know that some things that Paul's saying, those who are unlearned, they twist what Paul say. They twist what he say as they do also other scriptures. So pay attention, people. This is a warning for you that Peter is letting you know that those who are unlearned, who they think they got knowledge, who they think they wise, who they can quote scripture after scripture, but yet the, the Bible says they are unlearned. Peter says they are unlearned and they twist them. But they do it to their own destruction. See, that's why you can believe what Paul say because he was given wisdom. Look back at verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. So Paul wrote down some wisdom. Now let's look more of this. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Pay attention, people, so you're not deceived. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. For this cause I, Paul, prisoner, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you. So Paul was given a dispensation of the grace of God. He said he was given. All right. He says to you how that by revelation, how that by revelation, remember Paul wasn't there with the 11, but yet Paul says he was given revelation. He says how that by revelation he made known, talking about God, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. So Paul was given some wisdom that he wrote in a few words. This is what Peter was saying that Paul this um, wisdom that was given him that he had written in his epistles, okay? So, Paul, given this wisdom, look at what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13 through 15. Look at what Paul says. What well, it start at 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, we're talking about Christ. That's the son of God. That's the anointed one of God. That's the one that God raised from the dead. If that's the one that Jesus, that Peter preached that God raised Jesus, he glorified Jesus. Okay. The one that child slew and hung on the tree. Yeah, that Jesus, God raised him up. All right. Now look at what Paul says. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, 
How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? How are you going to say there ain't no resurrection? How are you going to say Jesus didn't resurrect from the dead? How could you say that Christ didn't rise from the dead, but yet you say God the Father rose? How could you say that if Christ is being preached that he or is the one that was raised from the dead? He says, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, if Christ didn't raise from the dead, he says, he said, then Christ is not risen. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And he says, and if Christ be not risen, so now check this out. Check this out. Your preacher told you that the son of God didn't rise from the dead. The son of God is Christ. That's the one that was, uh, that was birthed from Mary. Read Matthew chapter one, verse 16. Read Matthew chapter 2, verse 36. God made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So, so, Paul, so Paul saying here that if Christ be not risen, if Christ be not risen, then I will preach in his vein and your faith is also vain. You got to think about that. Because even your faith vain if Christ, the Son of God, didn't rise from the dead. But your preacher tell you God the Father got in that body and rose. If you don't believe that the Son of God rose, Christ rose, your faith is vain. And if you don't have faith, you are damned. Jesus says, he who believe, he say shall be saved, but he who don't believe shall be damned. Be careful. Your preacher is leading you to a damnable dis doctrine. If Christ, look at verse 14, and if Christ be not risen, if Christ be not risen, Christ is the son of God. That's the one that was born of Mary. If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified. See, we testified of God that he raised up Christ. See, he raised up Christ. God raised up Christ. So God can't be Christ. God raised up Christ. And he says, he said, we have found false witness of God because he said, we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. But he say, look, but if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain and ye are yet in your sins. That means your sins are not even paid for. Your sins ain't even counted for. Why? Because if you trying to say Christ didn't rise, you win your sins. And you calling Paul a liar. You are calling Peter a liar. You calling John a liar. Then he says, they also which are falling asleep in Christ, meaning those who died in Christ, they are perished if Christ didn't rise. But he says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, that's the son of God. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all most men. We are of all men most miserable because our hope is in Christ. So if Christ didn't raise, man, we miserable in this life. But look what he's saying. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep or that have died. So people, man, this is who this is a salvation issue. Now, look at what Paul says here. And I'm going to end this video. First Corinthians chapter eight. And I'm done. Look at verse six and seven. But to us, there is but one God. Now, this is the one that was given revelation by God. This is the one that was given wisdom that he wrote. Look at what he said. The one that I just read to you in 1 Corinthians 15 that told you Christ rose from the dead. God raised up Christ. God raised up Christ from the dead. Look at what he said. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, and 7. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, 
All things is of God the Father. And we in him. And look at what he say there. It, well, look at what he says there is that he is. And one Lord, Jesus Christ. So he says, but to us there is but one God the Father. Of whom are all things and we in him. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things and we by him. Now let's explain that. So, but to us there is but one God the Father, of whom are all things. So how of whom are all things? How is God of all things? Because God is the source. God is the source of all things. And we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are the, all things. So why you say in one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things? Why? Because God created all things by his word, right? So if all things are by Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the word of God made flesh. So the scripture tells us in Ephesians that I believe chapter three, that God made all things by Jesus Christ because Jesus is the word of God. So Paul puts a distinction between God, the father. He says there is, but one God, the father. And then he go on to say, and one Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he said in 1 Timothy 2, 15, he says, let me go to it. Let me go to it because I want to give you the exact words. I don't want to paraphrase. 1 Timothy 2, 15. I'm sorry, 2, 5. 1, 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God and one mediator. So you got one God and one mediator and Paul tells us one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. And that's the one that was born from Mary, from Mary. This is a salvation issue. If a preacher is preaching that Christ did not rise from the dead. Remember, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, you are yet in your sins. And they meaning the apostles are found false liars, false witnesses. I believe the witness of these men in this Bible. I believe these apostles don't believe your apostle, your preacher, your teacher, your prophet. If he not saying that Christ, the son of God, the one born for Mary, Mary, if she didn't, if he didn't rise from the dead, if he didn't rise, you in your sins, this is a salvation issue. I encourage you, believe the witnesses of the Bible.